Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Jane Tariqua. I'm the global partner. Buenos partner. días a todas y a todos. Mi nombre es Jane Tariqua. Antes de comenzar, quisiera hacer un reconocimiento territorial. Antes de com comenzar, quisiera reconocer que nos encontramos el día de hoy en el territorio tradicional de los... We thank them for allowing us to meet and learn together on their territories. To the original caretakers of this land of which we stand, to all that was here for thousands of years before us across Tato Island, we honor the struggle and the lives of those who gave themselves for it. For those here today, we acknowledge the ancestors. Beneath our feet, we acknowledge the land. Our ears to the ground, we can hear them. The Cree, the Métis, the Dene, the Soto and Anishinaabe, the Dakota and Lakota nations, the Inuit, the Blackfoot, the Inu, and all nations that came before us and those yet to become. An infinity of footsteps of those who long called this land home, the unfolding of bundles, the undoing of colonization, and the ongoing of this land to allow treaty to come alive. We affirm our relationship to each other and to the land. We acknowledge and pay respects to the indigenous nations and ancestors of this land. I acknowledge the land of the Huron Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation where I am right now. Thank you. So to start us off, uh, thank you very much everyone for joining our Women of Courage uh, workshop for this 20th anniversary. Um, we are very excited to have everyone here. Um, and we, we want to say a, a big thank you to our guest speakers. We have a lineup of amazing panelists who are going to share with us today. Um, and to start us off, I will welcome now Father James Oyet Latancio to lead us in an, um, an opening um, a prayer. So Father James is a Catholic priest and the General Secretary of the South Sudan Council of Churches, where he has provided executive leadership since April of 2015, supporting the member churches in playing a critical role in building a sustainable peace through implementing South Sudan's Council of Churches Action Plan for Peace. He is a passionate um, uh, individual about peace and, and reconciliation, um, having grown up through decades of war, part of which as a refugee, and building on his pastoral service in South Sudan and Italy. Father James earned his PhD in philosophy from Pontifical Urban University in Rome, Italy. Welcome, Father James. Thank you very much. Let us join our hands and pray together. God, our Father, I want to thank you for this possibility of coming together today as intergenerational and intersectional in the round table. I want to pray in a special way for all women of courage globally in all corners of the world, going through challenges, going through pains, going through difficulties. I want to appreciate the efforts of those women of courage May your blessing come upon them. May your wisdom always be with them, with the indigenous of the land on which we, we are. But we have to bless this our meeting, bless this round table, bless all our discussion and guide us with your Holy Spirit. We pray and trust this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jane. Thank you so much for the Oyet. Um, and now we move to the crux of the program for today, um, and Rachel will guide us through the first section of the workshop. Thank you, Jane, and, and thank you, um, uh, Father James, for, for, for starting us off in a good way. Uh, and welcome again to the Women of Courage workshop, where we come from, where we are at, and where we're, where we're headed. Um, I'm Rachel Warden, I'm partnership manager at, at Kairos and it's my privilege to host this workshop with my colleague Jane Thurika. Um, I want to extend a special welcome uh, and gratitude to the partners who are here from, from Colombia, from South Sudan, from Democratic Republic of Con Congo, from Philippines, from Palestine, all around the globe and including here on Turtle Island. During this workshop, you will have the opportunity to hear from part, these partners from Colombia and South Sudan, 
and hopefully from Penelica uh, First Nations in BC as they reflect on partnership. I also want to welcome those of you who are, are connecting from our network, um, those who've been accompanying this work and supporting partnerships through advocacy and education and financial contributions for a long time now, and those who are new to this. Welcome and thank you to colleagues at Kairos uh, as, as well. Um, I've been working with partners for a long time, uh, the 20 years of Kairos and seven years before that, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Our work in Kairos is grounded in these partnerships, informed by a knowledge, experience, and the realities of partners. And our work is best uh, when it's led by partners. And I think the uh, Women of Courage program is no exception. I want to do a very, very short overview of, 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 of the program. Very short. Um, the Women of Courage program, I think, was precipitated in 2010 when Kairos responded to an invitation of the Organización Femenino Popular uh, in Barranca Bermeja, Colombia, to participate in an international mobilization on women against militarization. Um, we organized a delegation, including Indigenous partners from Canada, migrant justice activists, and global partners to Colombia. We visited Indigenous and Afro-Colombian communities impacted by war and militarization, and accompanied community members in bus caravans, sometimes for three days, back to Barranca Bermeja, to participate in uh, a vigil at a military base. At the end, uh, we held a workshop uh, with partners on the gendered impacts of militarization and war and the use of international human rights frameworks and resolutions like the UN Security Council 1325 on women, peace and security to, to defend uh, the use of these to defend women's, women's rights and build sustainable peace. And after many uh, years of gender justice work, uh, I see this as the birth of the Women of Courage program and our work uh, on women, peace and security. Um, Jill Harris, who I'm hoping will, will join us uh, from Penelica Island, uh, was, a, was, um, was a member of this delegation. We've learned a lot uh, from partners uh, about the differential impacts of war and militarized conflict on women, the multiple ways in which women are affected uh, by war, but also the critical role that they play in building inclusive, equitable, and sustainable peace at all levels. The impacts of war on women and their role in peace building is more and more recognized at the UN uh, in these resolutions and in Canada. However, the implementation and funding of these policies uh, and resolutions falls short. In 2018, we received some funding from Global Affairs uh, Canada for the Women, Peace and Security Program, um, part of the Women of Courage Program. Global Affairs approved $4.5 million over six years, matched with Kairos uh, funding from Kairos donors. Uh, and this funding has allowed us to enhance our work with partners, particularly in the areas of psychosocial and legal support, human rights training, advocacy, and work with, with allies. I wanted to um, uh, welcome and thank representatives of Global Affairs Canada who have um, joined this workshop. The, the program is rooted in um, a theory of change uh, that we've learned from partners that when women and women uh, who are survivors and victims of militarized conflict and violence, including a gender-based violence, are provided with opportunities to heal, to restore self-esteem and dignity, to reclaim their rights, they become voices and actors in peace processes. Um, and actually with partners over the years, we've now developed tools to measure these outcomes, uh, including self-confidence and autonomy and participation. These are very difficult outcomes to measure. I'm sure you can appreciate since they're, they're very long-term and they're qualita qualitative, but we've been working with partners on, on this and um, partners continue to show an increase in sense of confidence, autonomy, communication, critical thinking in the participants in the program. I think that we can take pride in this work that we're doing with partners to demonstrate these out outcomes. Um, finally, I just want to say it's important to recognize how COVID has magnified the existing inequalities and vulnerabilities of partners, uh, including gender-based violence, economic insecurity, hunger, uh, human rights violations and militarized responses by repressive governments. And even in this context, partners are working with impacted communities, building conditions for peace 
and, 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 and working towards transformation. Um, in, in this context, um, partners also are drawing our attention to the importance of including economic justice and empowerment, as well as climate change and environmental issues in, in peace building, broadening our, uh, our, our notion or concept of security. And I, I want to say I want to let you, I want to let you know that tomorrow uh, around this at this time uh, there will be a, a workshop on on exactly on exactly this women peace and security includes climate adaptation or mitigation. Um, this is by way of a bit of an overview. Uh, I don't want to take uh, an, uh, any more time. We have a lot of speakers to hear from about their direct uh, experience uh, with this program. And to start it off. Um, I, I, want, I want to start with where we come from. Um, so this will be a bit of a round table and we're going to hear from, uh, from, from, um, from speakers about where we come from, what, what catalyzed this program in women, uh, women, Peace and Security, Women of Courage, what brought us together. Um, I was hoping that we could start this uh, with, uh, with uh, a response uh, from Jill Harris, um, but she has not been able to join us unless she has been able to join us in the last few minutes. Uh, and this might be difficulty with connection, but I just wanted to um, give a shout out to, to Jill who has been uh, a supporter and an advocate of Women of Courage program since its inception. Um, she's a member of Penelicate Nation and a grandmother and a former chief, a residential school survivor. Uh, she's currently um, the secretary uh, of the Penelicate Elders Advisory um, Committee and uh, is involved in the search for unmarked grave in Cooper Island Residential School. Um, so yeah, I mentioned that she participated in the 2010 um, uh, delegation to uh, to to Colombia and the participation in the um, the mobilization against militarization. I traveled to her. I traveled with her to communities uh, in the south, visited indigenous uh, communities in Colombia, and then we traveled back to Barranca Bermeja on a three day bus ride uh, to um, to the to the vigil at the military base, and she participated in this workshop. And then on the first Women of Courage tour to Canada, we, uh, we visited her community in Penelicate actually with a partner from uh, Chantelle Belulu from the Democratic Republic of Congo. And as I said, since then, Jill has been an active uh, voice and advocate in the, in the Women of Courage program. So I uh, just wanted to um, acknowledge uh, Jill here and uh, hope, hope, hope all is well with her and uh, that we will hear from her soon. Um, next, uh, I want to move to, uh, to Colombia, actually, uh, to uh, the Organización Femenina Popular and to Women of Courage in Colombia. And it's now my pleasure and my honor to introduce uh, Gloria Suarez. Uh, Gloria Suarez is an executive member of the Organización Femenina Popular in Colombia. Um, Gloria has been working for more than 40 years in the leadership of the OFP, um, supporting and supporting social movements. Uh, in addition to her position with the OFP, Gloria is on the municipal board of victims of in Barranca Bermeja, uh, and she um, she is a representative of gender justice issues. Gloria has extensive experience in providing psychosocial accompaniment to women victims of armed conflict and has been an advocate for human rights, peace, and uh, gender justice. I've known Gloria since uh, the beginning of our partnership with the OFP and my first trip to Colombia in 2001. Um, Gloria received the Kairos uh, Women of Courage delegation in 2010, uh, and at that time met, met Jill, um, and came to Canada in 2018 uh, and participated in the Women of Courage, Women, Peace and Security first, first South-South gathering. So thank you. Um, thank you so much, Gloria, for joining us. Um, it would be great just to hear from you, your thoughts about where we come from as Women of Courage. 
Thank you so much, Rachel, for the introduction and for the presentation. I would like to extend a warm welcome and greetings to everyone, to the team in Cairo who have accompanied us and who have been such an important support for us. And I'd like to send greetings as well to all the partners and allies who have made this work possible and who have made it possible for Cairo to support us. So I'm in Colombia, in Barranca Bermeja, in the Magdalena Medio region. It's close to the Magdalena River. And this is a region that has been highly disputed by the different um, armed groups. It's a region where forced displacement and forced disappearance, sexual violence and gender violence has been heightened. And this region has been deeply affected as a result. Our organization was born in 1972. We've been working for more than 40 years. Soon we will be celebrating 50 years for organizations defending human rights and defending especially women's human rights. We also defend land and natural resources. Our community has been affected by the armed conflict. Members of our community have been uh, murdered, exiled, suffered sexual violence as well, and been forcibly displaced and disappeared. And we, 2011, we worked in collective reparations. We participated in that process. It was a very complicated experience. And the Women of Courage program, as Rachel mentioned, began with that accompaniment that Kairos has given to our organization for more than 10 years. They've not only accompanied us economically, but also have been able to respond in political ways, morally. They've been there with us in the most difficult times. They've been a support that has helped our region move forward and survive. We give you thanks for your solidarity, and we also give thanks to all the allies that make this support possible. Also, as Rachel already mentioned, Women of Courage has been a fundamental program because it has helped to improve and it has helped women to recover from the impact of the armed conflict in the war. These are women who have been victims not only of gender violence in their homes, but of political violence and persecution because it has been women's bodies where all armed groups have tried to retaliate into, by using women's bodies. So women of courage, focuses on psychological, legal support, emotional and psychological well-being, and collective action, and support and accompaniment, human rights defense, all of that has been absolutely essential for us. It has been a very, very positive experience, and it has allowed us to help women empower themselves, empower themselves in terms of their rights, to become more active, to present themselves in front of authorities, and they often are re-victimized. And as a result of their access to local groups, we've been able to help them empower themselves. We've been able to help them with their self-esteem, with their autonomy. We've also been able to help them with the reproductive rights programs as well. And I should also mention COVID in the context of the pandemic. It has been and continues to be a very difficult situation for women. Previously, women, there were spaces where women could go, could meet, and now they, they were, had to be locked down with their aggressors in many cases. They had to be spend 24 hours at home and we saw an increase in gender violence. And there were also people who were armed, armed actors in their home. And therefore the situation became very complicated. And we've been able to accompany a lot of women 
through this experience and through this period, it has been essential to have access to the Women of Courage program because it focuses so specifically on women's needs. It help us, helps us to accompany women in their everyday lives. For example, there was a woman who was a, a migrant, which is another of the, the cases or the examples that we work with. There are women who come from Venezuela who are also very vulnerable, whose rights are being very are violated. And so we've been able to integrate them into our work. I'm very grateful for the program Women of Courage. It has been essential for our organization and for the work that we do to accompany women. Every day has been the work that Guidos does, their accompaniment, their way of following up with us, even though there's we're sort of distant, we feel you very close with us and we're so close, we're so grateful for your support and for your accompaniment. It has been essential for the women. We're so grateful, we're so grateful for your solidarity for accompanying us and for being such important human beings in our lives. And thank you for being present in such difficult moments in our region and in our community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for sharing um, your your vast experience of uh, of where we come from, and uh, um, and thank you for the accompaniment and solidarity of the OFP for all these years. Um, um, we've learned so much uh, from the from the Organización Femenina Popular about building feminist peace um, at at all levels, and um, I thank you so much for that. Um, and I know it's very difficult to share where we come from in five minutes, um, but thank you. Um, and thank you for, for, for those, those words. Um, now we're going to move on to uh, where we're at. Uh, and Jane is going to lead us in, in a discussion on, on, with partners on, on, on where we're at right now. So thank you, Jane. Thank you, Rachel and uh, Gloria. Um, so for this segment uh, of our workshop, we will welcome our panelists from Colombia and South Sudan to speak to where we are at. Um, and I can share a little bit about, uh, that, about the time of Kairos' establishment. Um, I remember I was a wee teenager then, and I remember hearing of and reading a lot about the United Nations Fourth World Conference of Women um, that was held in Beijing, China in 1995. And in many ways, uh, this conference heralded, uh, is heralded as having played a central part in, in efforts to improve women's status um, around the world. But on the other hand, there was and there continues to be a wide ranging resistance to protecting women's human rights. Um, and this could be attributed to, uh, you know, a desire to curb women's effectiveness in human rights advocacy. So um, fast forward, moving um, in addition to the contributions of the, from the Beijing conference and into the 2000s, both the United Nations uh, Security Council Resolution 1325 and the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against, of, uh, against Women, CEDAW, um, these frameworks were adopted in 2000. And for the partners who we're hearing from today, this international human rights instruments, um, they complement a lot of their work. Um, so just a quick note that after nearly 50 years of conflict, the Colombian government ratified a peace agreement with the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia in 2016. And in South Sudan, it's a young nation, um, South Sudanese voted to secede from Sudan in January of, of, of 2011. But in these countries and others experiencing conflict, women and girls are still disproportionately affected by um, violence against women. So I'm looking to hear from the speakers today if they can share with us, um, like what, what some of the most significant outcomes of our partnerships in this work are, what are the most pressing issues, um, and, and what partnerships like with organizations like Kairos uh, in, in their opinion and in their context and, and landscape, how they have changed them. So I'll begin with our partner in um, South Sudan. We will first hear from 
Leonard Mambo. Um, Mambo is um, the advisor of programs and admi administration at South Sudan Council of Churches. A Catholic faithful and a lawyer by profession, Mambo has over nine years working experience in humanitarian and civil society organizations, advancing peace building and conflict transformation in the Republic of South Sudan. He is passionate about ensuring social cohesion among communities, having worked as a facilitator in community dialogue. So Mambo, please share with us in your opinion, how the context of women human rights landscape has changed where you are and um, some of the most significant outcomes from these partnerships that we have, for example, with Kairos. Welcome, Leonard. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jen and uh, the entire team for giving me this opportunity. I, I have to appreciate that this is one of the most rare opportunities that uh, one would wish to have, uh, because uh, looking at the fact that we also celebrating uh, 20th anniversary of Kairos, and also looking at this, the fact that we had a very long term engagement with Kairos. Uh, if you can permit me to have a very simple presentation on behalf of the team, uh, I want to do some bit of slide uh, where I will be able to highlight some of the key issues uh, as far as our partnership uh, is concerned with uh, Kairos, uh, specifically Kairos Canada. Am I allowed to do some presentation, simple uh, highlight of presentation on some of the key issues? Yes, so this is some simple presentation that I want to table in this uh, very important event, uh, celebrating Kairos uh, uh, for the 20th anniversary. Uh, when you look at the context of South Sudan, uh, is a very unique situation that uh, one would not expect to, 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 to see in this modern era. Uh, the, the, the context in South Sudan, as far as women in particular are concerned, is very unique because we have a lot of stories, a lot of issues uh, surrounding uh, gender-based violence uh, as a result of the ongoing conflict and uh, also the level of uh, vulnerability, uh, specifically among, among the women, girls, and children. You'll be able to see that uh, uh, one out of seven South Sudanese women, uh, in most cases, die from childbirth, uh, pregnancy, and also you'll see that 16% uh, of women over 15 are, are literate compared to 40% uh, of men, while the constitution guarantees equality between men and women, and, and, and this sets a percentage uh, quota of 35% for women in legislative assembly. But when you look at the practical aspect of uh, how these things are exhibited uh, as far as uh, the context in South Sudan is concerned, uh, does not properly reflect uh, uh, what is being done. Uh, so looking at this, uh, the current context, as far as this discussion is concerned, is that uh, much as we are, we, are, we are practically doing a lot of things as far as our partnership with Kairos uh, is concerned, we still believe uh, in, in, in chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 13, that much as we are entangled by a lot of issues in this country, uh, we can still do a lot of things through uh, the strength that uh, Kairos is giving us. Allow me to go straight away to the context itself. Uh, what has changed as far as our partnership with Kairos Canada is concerned? Uh, looking at uh, our partnership right from the onset, you'll be able to see that uh, through uh, the South Sudan Council of Churches uh, National Women Program, uh, which is respected across the entire country because of our special position as far as South Sudan Council of Churches is concerned, because the church in South Sudan's context is seen as uh, a neutral body uh, that unites people in different contexts. And you, you'll be able to see this in different respects as far as conflict resolution in the country is concerned. Uh, when you look at, you'll be able to see some pictures uh, that I generated from our partnership, activities that we did together with women, encouraging women to participate, uh, looking at the fact that the participation of women in, in, in different decision-making arena is limited uh, through the support we're able to engage women. Specifically, uh, National Women Program has brought out 
a structure that we call uh, the Women Link, the Social Women Link, under the uh, under the auspices of Social Council of Churches. Through the support, we're able to engage the women in different forums. You can see one on the other side, uh, Father James is uh, uh, opening a session, uh, uh, delivering session uh, where women are able to be engaged to, you know, in one of the activities. They are attending uh, prayers and fasting uh, in one of the churches trying to advocate for peace. And this has been a very rare occasion that used not to be uh, done by women on their own. You'll also have to be able to see that uh, through our, our support, uh, you'll see space has been created for women to communicate and speak. Uh, this is also one of the rare opportunities that uh, women in the past were not able to be engaged. Uh, you'll also be able to see that uh, women uh, have been created a platform to uh, you know, advocate in different ways, uh, communicating their voices in different events. Uh, through Kairos Canada, we are able to engage women uh, through their support uh, to communicate what they want to see, more especially as far as their participation in the peace process. Uh, what do they want to see? What, do, what, what, what does the law provide as far as uh, 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 their rights are concerned? But is this, uh, are these rights being exhibited uh, as far as uh, the practical aspect of uh, what we call uh, inclusion in the country is concerned? So all these communications have been done through different platforms and in these different platforms, women are able to, you know, for a cast and, and communicate what they want to communicate to the system that is that is that is that is in attention of this particular kind of event. Uh, you'll be able to see also that uh, uh, when you see some communication here, we this program has has made sure that women are able to become facilitators. You'll be able to see a woman uh, giving some wonderful facilitation uh, as far as uh, gender justice. You've seen some uh, uh, under it here. We have a training on gender justice because women have been engaged in different platforms to to be able to understand their rights. And these rights can be understood. They were able to understand these rights through different trainings that were given to them. And most of them are able to become facilitators. They have, been able, they have been able to roll out the ideas that they generated from most of these trainings. Uh, all in all. Recently, we have an assessment that we were able to carry on as far as the impact of our engagement with women, civil society, and also the entire country is concerned. We're able to uh, generate an understanding that matters. We still have existing uh, issues of gender-based violence, issues of violation of rights, issues around women and poverty, at least uh, coming from a platform where we coming from a situation where we don't have a platform that creates uh, an understanding for women to communicate to now a situation where women are able to be together and communicate probably what they want to communicate is a step forward as far as our engagement is concerned. So in this particular end, I want to say that our engagement with Kairos Canada has impacted so much and is still impacting because we have created a platform and we have also created a mechanism for women and also the other uh, uh, other category, uh, vulnerable people who are who feel they should be part of this kind of discussion are brought together to communicate. Yeah. And this is what I see as very important as far as uh, this particular event is concerned. Uh, moving forward, as, as 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 if you may permit me to move on, um, Leonard. Uh, I think in the interest of time, I'm really uh, I didn't really want to interrupt because I'm still really interested in what you have to hear, but. Um, in the interest of time, I think uh, I'll, I'll switch and uh, give the Women Link members uh, an opportunity to also speak speak to this. And thank you, uh, thank you so much, Leonard. If we, if we do have time, we'll definitely come back to you because I'm really, really interested in hearing the, uh, the end of your presentation. Um, and we do have uh, a delegation of Women Link members. Um, I do have on my list Lily Richard, Asunta Bernardino Jacob, Rose Guerrier, I hope I pronounce your name correctly, and Margaret Barsaba. Um, I'm not quite sure which one is uh, um, the key speaker from Women Link, uh, but I will invite them now to share with us a little bit about what has been the most significant outcomes of our partnership um, uh, in the Women of Courage work um, and in their participation um, in peace building efforts uh, with South Sudan Council of Churches. So um, 
I will welcome the speakers from Women Link um, to share with us a little bit uh, about their work and the outcomes from this program. Yes, Margaret can take on. Thank you. I think uh, our brother he gave more things about women, what uh, activities we are doing here in South Sudan, present in South Sudan Council of Churches. Uh, we have women empowerment. Uh, we have workshops in different trainings, human rights, like uh, we have the uh, human rights and women rights. I uh, have uh, trauma healing, forgiveness, reconciliation is the situation where we are. We have forgiveness and then reconciliation. And then uh, the teaching about the GDP and women peace and security. Then peace intervention. We have monthly prayer. We are having from church to church. And the women they are from different ethnic uh, dominations. And all the churches, uh, that one, they're under SCC, we used to move together and pray for peace. And the other one, uh, all the prayers uh, where we are doing, that brings unity, love, understanding, forgiveness, and for, uh, reconciliation among women, even not women only, entire South Sudan. We went to uh, the president's policy twice for press. He invited us, uh, and it was a great achievement to have that opportunity. Even here, you cannot find a chance to go and pray uh, with your president or in the policy. And women, we have that chance. We went and then we had a nice with our bishops and all the pastors. Uh, that one, uh, another thing, we march on street giving this message. Then uh, we have the outreach. We went home to home, giving awareness and preaching about the COVID-19 and even COVID uh, affected South Sudan. We are being trained for it and then we start teaching people, giving awareness from house to house. And then even we have the GBV from home to home awareness about early marriage. Because here some uh, tribes, they used to call their children uh, to go for marriage, in early marriage. And even we have the raping of girls, women. So those are all about uh, is happening here. But now, all what we have done, really there is a great change. Even we have the girls, that when they drop out girls, now they start going back to schools. Even this year, some they left their children with their mothers and now they, um, they are going on with their studies. And uh, we have that one, the hard language that people used to talk. Sometimes just you step on somebody's leg, you start insulting you. But now, all that now stops. Uh, now people are in peace and even now in the peace language. And we have a harmful tradition. Now some of reduced, like early marriage, now no longer there. And even uh, we, we went to the, uh, we went to the state. We have here that one, 10 states, and then women being trained. After that one, we went to the states for the solidarity visit. And that solidarity visit, we give the message of hope and encouragement. Because we are, we are telling, especially for those of IDPs, we went to talk to them to come back home. They are living there, we want them to come and then uh, we're giving them hope for the future because uh, now we have been preaching about peace. Peace is going to be there. Uh, some, they completely, they lose their hope, but now they start coming together. They're loving each other, their friends and uh, all what our women have been doing. Women Link, they give thanks for your supporting our office here, especially the South Sudan Council of Churches. Really, we love you people there. Continue and we will have more trainings and even uh, be together until next time, even we we'll meet again. Bye. I'm called Margaret Basaba. Women Link. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you so much. Um, it, and it's really awesome to see you. We hope that, you know, with, with the COVID situation, once things, um, you know, improve a little bit, we'll be able to 
to visit you in South Sudan. Uh, we always welcome these visits to, to meet with partners and, and with beneficiaries and to see your work and, and, and to um, stand with you in solidarity uh, and in peace. Thank you so much, Margaret. I'll now move to Kelly from the OFP. Um, so Kelly, in, in relation to the context, obviously, uh, with what is happening in Colombia, if you could share with us maybe a little bit about some of the outcomes from the partnerships and what, in your opinion, are the most pressing issues now. Kelly, welcome. Gracias. Muy buenos días para todos y todas. Siempre Hi, good morning to everyone. It's such a privilege to be able to be part of this space. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you and to share our experiences with you. We're in a current state of emergency and the state of emergency is a result of the pandemic. And now we move to Lucy in Bethlehem. Um, for me, I've been in a uh, speaking tour for the women encouraged. By the way, it's really hard to, to, to say it, what kind of experience and memories. But one of the memories that I have at um, Saskatchewan, when we had the, to, the chance to participate in the Truth and Reconciliation, and it was really amazing experience for me. It touched my heart and the comparison between the indigenous and we as a Palestinian, that was uh, really uh, um, painful, but also uh, it's really strong uh, empowerment to keep walking for peace and justice. Thank you so much, Lucy. Next, Vani from the Philippines. Hi, good evening, good morning there in Canada, good evening from the Philippines. And I'm really very happy to uh, be uh, with you in this, uh, you know, in this space. And well, actually, in terms of ex experience uh, in advocacy uh, with the Women of Courage, I'd been part, part since 2010 when I had been part of the Women of Courage, but uh, maybe uh, for uh, two very uh, crucial uh, memories is like, or very important memories is that like one, when we had the audience uh, along with um, Jill and then the members of that team that went to Colombia in 2010. And then after the uh, trip, after the community trip that we were able to like share what we had heard and we had uh, yeah the voices that we have heard from the women human rights defenders to the uh, members of the canadian uh, canadian embassy yeah so uh, that was my first uh, meeting with the the canadian embassy outside of the philippines <laughs> and then of course um the second when uh, yeah, unfortunately, we weren't allowed to take photos, yeah, because it was uh, their protocol. So that was something that we missed. And then in 2011, when I joined the uh, Women of Courage, uh, Courage tour across Canada, and then we had the chance of like meeting with um, Senator uh, Mubina. Rachel, what was her um, family Ms. name? Jaffer. We'll yeah, Jaffer. Uh, yeah, Jaffer. And uh, that was memorable to me in the sense that, you know, uh, she was, uh, well, she heard and she, uh, she heard uh, the, uh, she, she listened uh, carefully to, uh, to uh, my story coming from the Philippines and also from Chantal coming from uh, Congo from the Republic of Congo. And then she also like shared a, uh, their uh, kind of like a an investigation report in a short while she was able to arrange a meeting with the in the senate yeah so we were able to like you know to uh to uh to uh, observe and be welcomed be acknowledged in the uh in the senate yeah, the women of courage. So that was like, you know, the memorable. And there are like lots of <laughs> meetings that had been like organized thereafter. 
Right. Uh, Thank but you. Uh, yeah, yeah, these meetings had really, uh, yeah, had uh, uh, provided us uh, that space to kind of like share, but at the same time to kind of like see, hear from them what they will do to act being the the uh, uh the persons or like the bodies accountable to this thank, thank you, you so much bernie thank you bernie and we appreciate it. it's 10 15 p.m right now in the philippines and uh we appreciate you joining us um and last we want to hear from uh reverend lee Thank you so much, Jane, and everyone uh, who has spoken for your profound courage and wisdom and uh, really the fire of hope and transformation that you have shared with us today and every day that we know that you are doing on the front lines with your communities. So our deepest respect and gratitude. And I would say that um, the most amazing memories are uh, every time we get to sit with you and and hear the stories from the communities, because it also it helps with our own clarification of thought and practice on the ground as we also seek to defend our communities that are displaced through generations of colonialism here in in uh, the urban centers in Toronto. And so for me, the, the most profound memory uh, is also being accompanied uh, going forward after, you know, all of the delegations meeting with partners in Montreal um, and being so profoundly inspired by our partners. Uh, those same people like Lucy and Tarek and Verney uh, continue to accompany us now and share their teachings on, you know, how they cope with uh, violence in their communities and uh, change us, you know, from, from, from their witness. So thank you so much uh, for the courage of all of our partners. Thank you so much, Lee, and thank you everyone who shared. And I wish we could do this. <laughs> I wish we could do this uh, for longer. Um, and please, if you do have memories, do, do share them in the chat or share them with me or with Jane, and we will share them with partners because this is, uh, it's, it's, it's nutrients, uh, it's air, it's oxygen to keep, to keep the work going. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to say again, thank you to everyone for this, this fabulous um, discussion, a trip down memory lane uh, and look at the current situation and I look at our hopes and, and aspirations. Um, and I want to recognize the extremely difficult conditions that the partners are working in um, right now, or working and living in right now. And in spite of that, in defiance of that, they continue this work of building peace, um, building justice, uh, building equity. So I just wanna thank, recognize that and, and, and thank them. So thank you to all the speakers, uh, this, the, this intergenerational panel. Thank you, Father James. Thank you, Gloria Leonard, the, women's, uh, the Women Link um, group. Um, Kelly, um, thank you, um, everyone. I hope I'm not missing anyone. Thank you to the translators. Thank you to the translators for allowing us to be able to communicate um, trilingually and to communicate with partners. Um, thanks to um, the partnership team, uh, all my colleagues. Thank you for all the colleagues in Kairos behind the scenes and doing all the work to make this possible. Um, and um, thank you for you know all the partners who have joined us uh, from from Turtle Island and around uh, around the world uh, to the network, to um, uh, their supporters from Global Affairs Canada, um, and we hope. Um, that you will continue to journey with us uh, for the next uh, to, for the next twenty years to build uh, relationships for for change and transformation. So thank you again for joining us. Um, you will be hearing from uh, from the partnership team and the Women of Courage program. We have um, activities planned for sixteen days of activism, which starts on November twenty fifth and goes to December tenth. We'll have um, 16, 16 stories of change and courage that will be highlighted during those 16 days. Uh, we have plans for a podcast from Jane. Um, we, we have lots of plans. So please stay tuned. And again, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day and the rest of the gathering.